Hello space fans and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. Dark news everyone! <laughs> Scientists are closing in on more specifics of that elusive, annoying stuff we call dark matter. This is the stuff that doesn't emit any kind of radiation and somehow makes up 25% or so of the known universe. We don't know what it is, what it's made of, or anything about it, except that it exists. And we know it exists by looking at the effects it has on things we can see, because the only known way dark matter interacts with our observable universe is through gravity, and specifically through the effects dark matter plays in sculpting very large structures in the universe, like galaxies and galaxy clusters. Now, astronomers can currently tell how much dark matter a galaxy has by carefully measuring things like the rotation rate and star distribution and the trajectories of all the gas inside of it. Now, these are very hard measurements to make, and really all it tells us is where the dark matter is clumped in a particular area of a galaxy or a cluster. But this hasn't daunted scientists from trying to directly detect dark matter particles, whatever they are. I mean, currently there are sensitive instruments placed underground in tens of thousands of gallons of water using liquid xenon to generate photons, and, they're, and they are designed to detect very light, weakly interacting particles that are believed to be associated with dark matter. Now, so far no one has detected anything, but what scientists say would be really nice is if we could figure out what the energies of these particles are so they would know what to look for more precisely which is where this week's story comes in. If some models of dark matter are correct, then there may be a super light particle called an axion that may make up the bulk of whatever dark matter is. Now, I'm not going to go into what an axion is because I'm not entirely sure, but what I do know is they are a hypothetical elementary particle that was first postulated in the 1970s, and they also haven't been found yet. But the research this week helps narrow down what to look for and if scientists can find it, then they have a rough outline as to what dark matter is. So using supercomputers in Europe, scientists in Budapest ran some model simulations that were designed to figure out what the mass of the axions that might make up dark matter should be. This helps tremendously with the search for dark matter because scientists can tweak those underground detectors to look for particles in a certain mass range. Now what they found was that if dark matter particles contain axions, then those axions should weigh between 50 and 1500 microelectron volts. Now this energy range is 10 billion times lighter than electrons. <laughs> Talk about a wimp. So as you can imagine, these particles won't be an easy thing to find, but at least now they know something about what they're looking for. Dark matter, you are so annoyingly elusive, but we are picking at you one axion at a time. <laughs> Now again, according to the model, if maxions make up dark matter, and based on the dark matter maps we already have of galaxies and galaxy clusters, it is estimated that there are, on average, 10 million axions in every cubic centimeter of the universe. But of course dark matter is clumped up, not evenly distributed everywhere. So in galaxies like, oh, I don't know, ours? <laughs> there should be more axions, way more like one billion axions in every cubic centimeter. Now this is great because it dramatically increases our chances of detecting these wimpy dark matter, dark matter, <laughs> wimpy dark matter subparticles once and for all. And thanks to this new research, scientists now know where to set their dials on the detector to improve their chances of seeing it. It's kind of like tuning into a TV station, isn't it? <laughs> Next. You may not know this, and if you don't, then I have been remiss in my duties. But astronomers are trying to build the world's newest, largest telescope in the world on Mauna Kea in Hawaii. It's called the 30 meter telescope, and if it gets built, it would be the largest ever at, well, 30 meters across. <laughs> now the plans for building it have been ongoing for a while, and astronomers are ready to break ground, and they had initially secured permission and all of the permits to begin building on Mauna Kea which is a 14,000 foot dormant volcano on the Big Island of Hawaii. But plans for construction halted in December 2015 indefinitely due to a decision by the Hawaiian Supreme Court that ruled that the state did not follow the proper process when officials granted a construction permit to the University of Hawaii for the project. 
And everyone associated with the project is confident the appeals process will result in the continuation of construction. But just to be safe, the 30 Meter Telescope's International Observatory Board decided late last month that if they cannot move forward with the building of the telescope in Hawaii, then they will instead choose La Palma, which is one of Spain's Canary Islands. And the Canary Islands is home to the current biggest telescope in the world, the Great Canary Telescope, which has a 10 meter primary, about one third the size. Now everyone wants Hawaii though, because it is so high and the air at that altitude is very dry, with little water vapor, which makes infrared astronomy possible. Now the Canaries are a good spot too, but not as good with respect to the water vapor situation as Mauna Kea is. And either way, the telescope will be built, the only question is where. There has also been lots of local opposition to building TMT on Mauna Kea because many native Hawaiians hold the volcano to be sacred ground, and they feel that all those, all those observatories up there are desecrating the site. There are currently 11 major observatories operating on Mauna Kea. The largest right now are the Keck 1 and Keck 2 telescopes. Well, that is it for this week, Space Fans. Thanks to the Planets Foundation for sponsoring Space Fan News this month. Please visit their site, which is in the description box below. Thanks to all Patreon patrons for making SFM possible at all. And thank you for watching. And as always, keep looking up.